In the last few years, we've started to see record-breaking temperatures in so many places around the globe. So much so that, at this point, it's pretty much impossible to deny the climate change. Those heat waves have been at the source of massive wildfires in places like Turkey, California, and they've also been melting the Arctic. But as if that wasn't enough, something even worse is taking place in our cities. The problem is that our cities are warming up a lot. And the way we've been trying to cool ourselves down using air conditioning is pretty much working against us and making cities even warmer, especially at night. The way that happened is quite simple, but first, we need to understand why cities are warmer than rural places. And that reason is because of a phenomenon called the heat island effect. Let me explain. Cities can be represented as a place with lots of infrastructure and an abundance of human activity. Just think of cars, motorcycles, factories, power plants, all that already generate a large amount of heat in addition to the constant exposition to the sun and the added temperature brought by global warming. Cities are also made with lots of heat absorbing material like concrete for most buildings, asphalt on every road and parking lots, and dark roofs which absorb more heat than lighter colors. So during the day when the sun is radiating and human activity is at its peak, all these sources generate tons of heat. A big portion of it is dissipated high up in the air. But the rest, well, it's absorbed by those heat absorbing materials. So the overall temperatures of the city goes up by a little. During the day, it's not much of a problem because we are used to days being decently hot. The problem is that at night, when everything is supposed to cool down a little because of the sun's absence, all that heat that was absorbed by the buildings, the roads, the dark roofs, and more is then released back into the air. And that's because cold areas and warm ones always tend to balance each other out. That heat is then added on top of the one that is still being generated by all the human activity that is still taking place during the night. On top of that, the very way buildings are positioned in cities make a great difference in heat levels. For example, in cities that are designed in a grid layout, there's less space for air to circulate between the narrow streets which raises up alleyways temperature. Now, after hearing all of this, you might think that using more air conditioners might be the solution. It seems to make sense as they're really efficient in cooling down buildings and their use is especially recommended during heat waves to prevent heat strokes. But that would be a really bad idea because air conditioning is actually one of the largest sources of heat production in cities and the usage can actually drastically impact the surrounding area's temperatures. The way they work is pretty simple. They absorb the heat inside rooms using a liquid called a refrigerant. They then blow that heat outside using a fan, and this process is repeated until the room is at the right temperature. But during that same process, the device itself produces heat, that it needs to evacuate outside on top of the heat already coming from the room. In a study made by a few researchers in the city of Phoenix in Arizona, they noticed that ACs were raising the temperature by as much as 1.5 degrees at night. So what we're essentially doing is heating up our cities to the point where it becomes difficult to live in apartments during summer. And we're then trying to cool ourselves down using a device that then releases more heat. That doesn't really make sense. Now, here are a few techniques that we could use to lower the temperatures instead of using air conditioners. First, using lighter colors instead of dark ones. For example, the white lines on crosswalks retain less heat than the asphalt dark gray color. And then adding more vegetation because on top of serving as shading, trees actually cool down their surroundings using a method called evapotranspiration. They absorb water using their roots and then release a part of it above themselves, which create a cool layer that lowers the overall temperature of the surrounding area. Now, unless we start applying some of these possible solutions to attenuate our dependence to air conditioners 
or we fix the global warming problem itself, we're probably going to be stuck in this loop for quite a while.